I thank you for taking time out of your afternoon to drop in with us and hear our information. Uh, we are, uh, I'm excited about the offerings that we have and some of the partnerships that we're going to discuss today. Uh, it seems like reference-based pricing is a large or uh, huge topic with everybody. Uh, we've seen over the last four to five years, we've seen a trend towards level funding. And uh, I think reference-based pricing can be one of the things that can move us forward in the level funded uh, process and program as well. Some of the topics that we will be discussing today are how we got here, managed care, what is reference-based pricing, the elephant in the room, I think you're going to like that one, and then finding providers and providing solutions. So our goal today is to discuss a little bit. I'm not going to go absolute detail into every issue on some of these, so um but I want to make sure that you're familiar with what reference-based pricing is and some of the solutions that we have today. So if you need more details or uh, need to go into a, a deeper discussion, uh, please give me a call or email me and we'll set up a call and I'll be more than happy to uh, connect with you on that. So first slide here is what is managed care? A lot of times we view it as, and, and we viewed it in the 90s, as really that, that managed caratron machine is to, to limit your access, the way they do it, to depersonalize it. Now, I mean, I know a lot of doctors since the turn of 2000 have uh, retired just because they didn't want to put up with the speed of seeing patients, et cetera. But really managed care, 90, probably 90% 90 of managed care is really this second illustration, which is a dollar swap for services with a hospital and or provider. What really uh, managed care is it really started with the involvement of a patient in cost containment. So deductible started, out-of-pocket, co-insurance all started uh, as a way to control cost. And then it went on from controlling cost to controlling access. And the way that uh, became popular in the 90s, if you were around them, was the PPO and then it became the HMO and POS uh, competition. Uh, they really ramped it up and, and uh, arranging uh, fee discounts, who had the better discounts, who had the limits, who controlled it better. Uh, co-pays, et cetera, et cetera. We, we remember those days. And as we mentioned, the 90s, uh, prescription drugs accounted to about 8% of claims in the 90s. Today, prescription drugs are approximating 30% of your claims dollars. So uh, again, that the prescriptions are sending 30% of your rate increase as well. So there's a big war with the PBMs going on now, who has this and et cetera. So that's still shaking out in a lot of ways for us. Um, the next issue with managed care is what is cost sharing? Cost sharing is just like this guy here in the bed is talking about. It's where patients that go to a hospital, they're still uninsured whether we have ACA or not. They still are, they're still uninsured. They're still non-paying cli uh, clients that go into the hospital for services, et cetera. Uh, one of the things that we do have is, I'll go back to the, the illustration here, is cost sharing and um, the, the treating of uninsured or non-paying clients. Those dollars are sloughed off on the, onto those that are paying or insured. And basically, it's just like what retailers say on, on when they have uh, inventory loss. It's the cost of doing business. What about price transparency? Price transparency and quality transparency were two things that were promised in the ACA. And really, that we haven't seen uh, is my belief. Healthcare is really, uh, here's some statements about the economics of healthcare. Healthcare is the only service people consume without knowing the cost in advance. You go into a, a restaurant, you go into a store. Uh, I always you seem to use Best Buy as my example to go buy a TV. And you, 
if you go to the clerk and you say, I would like to purchase this TV, and they say, great, who do you work for? And they adjust the price according to who you work for. That's, uh, I'd be rather upset about that. Uh, I want the same price as everybody else, but with healthcare, that's not the case. You go in and it's one price if you're with Blue Cross, one price if you're with PHCS, another if you're with Cigna, uh, another if you're with Medicare. So what we have is there is no price match guarantee and there is no economies where if there's no uh, nobody's going in for elective surgery, well, then the, the rate should go down according to economics. But it doesn't work that way. Um, what about the enormous disparity in cost for identical services? Again, this is exactly what we're just talking about. Let's look at that. Manufacturers suggested retail price. This is where the prices and services start for procedures. The provider, the hospital, uh, the facility, they make, they put a price tag on it, just like at a, a, a you go on to a, a new car lot or even a used car lot, but typically a new car lot, and it says manufactured suggested retail price. Well, and then they give you discounts. Off of that, you get a discount because it's 4th of July, you get a discount because you're a veteran, you get discount, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's the same way it is with, with health insurance and uh, procedures with providers, is that they start at a manufacturer's suggested price, then they give you a PPO rate, which is 20 to 40 percent lower, which is pre-negotiated in advance. Again, the same thing like we talked about with Best Buy is that, hey, we're going to buy this TV with a 25 percent discount just because I work with um, ABC company. Again, the special special uh, sale price. HMOs, POS, EPO, well, they all give you a deeper discount by contracting fewer providers. Uh, they're limiting referrals or even a monthly capitation is in there. But the problem really sticks with the unknown starting price and no transparency on that cost. So what about price and transparency? We start with that, um, the cost of service. Then we discount down. Manufacturers, MSRP. And that's how we get our carrier discounts and our rates. So private insurers pay nearly double Medicare rates for hospital services. And that ranges from 141% on up to 259% across uh, a number of studies that I looked at. According to the Kaiser Family Foundation, uh, April 15, 2020, the difference between private insurance and Medicare rates is greater for outpatient services at a hospital, 264% versus 189% of Medicare rates. So again, we have a problem where a majority of our services uh, on a hospital facility are on an outpatient basis. So we're averaging 264%. So are those, are you getting anything more? Are you getting a better quality of care by paying those extra prices? What about price transparency? Let's look at an example. Cost of an MRI in San Francisco. Here's the zip code 94016. Cost of it without dye on a back. Health diagnostic 575, that sounds reasonable. St. Mary's 875. Uh, NorCal 1024. Valley radiology 1378. Drop down to California Pacific Medical Center, $2,607. University of California Medical, what is that, $6,000 plus? What's the average reimbursement by Medicare? $614. Typically, these are all the same machine. It produces the same results. What are you paying for? You're paying for markup. If you go across the United States, Medicare typically pays $464 for the scan. Let's look at another example, Cal CalPERS, which is a program for Medicare and Medicaid patients in or um, participants in the state of California. They saw because they have a Medicare, a large Medicare base, is that uh, they were getting quotes or getting 
fees for reimbursement on knee replacements from anywhere between $20,000 and $100,000 plus. So what, they, what did they do? They just turned around and did just like Medicare, and they just said, fine, here's the price. We're going to pay $30,000 for that uh, knee replacement. Guess what? None of the hospitals are turning away those patients because they're limited. They wanted to charge 70, but they're willing to take 30. So what's the, how about this one? What's the price for a COVID test? That's a big discussion right now. MSRP, one of our, repri our repricing partner, uh, just received a, a, a note from them the other day. For the last six weeks, they've been receiving charges of over $1,100 from providers in Texas to do a COVID test or $500 to $990 in Oklahoma. According to the New York Times here, uh, June 16, 2020, uh, Gibson Diagnostics Lab is charging $2,315 for individual coronavirus tests. What does Medicare pay? $100. What are they going to typically if, uh, accept? If they accept Medicare patients, they're going to take that $100 and, and uh, they're not allowed to balance bill. Again, unknown starting price. Where's the transparency? You don't, there's, there's no transparency. You don't even know all the procedure codes until they send you, until you get it back in an EOB from your insurance carrier. Well, how about this idea? How about we manage care differently? Why don't we find a reference base that we can start at and go from there? What if we started at Medicare pricing and then we go up from there? We know that Medicare is the rock bottom. Doctors, hospitals all complain, Medicare, 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 how cheap and how uh, tight it is and that they can't uh, run their practice just by that amount. Well, they still continue to accept those patients. So what if we give them a little more, but not the 264% more? Now we have a known amount. We have set pricing. We have easier administration uh, for the insurance carriers. Uh, we can use any provider who's willing to accept that, and there's no change in services. So we're not limiting your services. We are just taking a deeper discount. So we're doing our reference-based pricing here at OptiMed at 150% of Medicare versus a PPO being 200 to 265% of Medicare. So what can we expect? Let's be realistic now is in what we can expect. You know, I'm not going to promise you you're going to save 30, 40, 50% in claims in a year because every year your claims dollars are spent differently. Where are your claims dollars going? Here's a, a report from 2019. Uh, typically, if you look at it, you can see inpatient 19%, outpatient 29%, physicians and pharmacy. So again, you can see it, your savings are going to depend if you're doing more, if you end up with more inpatient or more physician uh, offices, it's going to vary on your percentage of savings or a higher level in the pharmacies. By migrating to a reference-based pricing system, employers can expect a minimum of 10 to 15 percent savings. Realistic, conservative. That's what we want to be. We want to under-promise and over-deliver for you. Those savings are, are largely just moving networks, changing to a reference-based pricing. We can save that much mo um, money for uh, your employers. The reference-based pricing model flattens year-over-year -year trend because you are renewing, because Medicare doesn't always raise their rates 10, 15 percent a year like many physician offices do. Reference-based pricing process for hospital care. Approval for surgical procedure. Typical, this is, this is the same format you see everywhere. They, the hospital checks to see, uh, does pre -cert? Is the provider in hospital, uh, do they accept reference-based pricing and the discounts? The EOB will show the discounts. Member just pays the deductible out-of-pocket. Everybody's happy. Now, just like going out of network, you can say there are non-reference-based providers, and they won't accept it. 
There was a hospital in Virginia that refused to accept 150% of Medicare rate. And the provider, the carrier, took them to court and the carrier won the case. And the judge said they have to accept reimbursement of 150% of Medicare because they were already accepting the 100% on Medicare. I know there is some feedback coming on from some different hospitals around different areas, but a majority of them are going to accept that. And we're going to discuss that more in just a minute. So really, let's address something here. Let's address this elephant in the room. This is one of the big comments of one of my professors uh, years ago when I was in, in college. Where, where's the elephant? Where's the giraffe? What's sticking out here for us? What is sticking out is what about balanced billing? Probably many of you have done some level funded plans and offering and saying, okay, and yes, we've used this network or that network, but how can we get better? But the one issue that you, the biggest question in everybody's mind is what about balanced billing? Here's how we're going to deal with balanced billing. 90% plus really of providers are accepting that reference-based price of 150% of Medicare. So when we tell providers we're at 150% of Medicare, they're like, fine, we'll take that. It's some of these other reference-based pricing plans that are trying to trim it even lower, and that's where they're getting a lot of their kickback from. Another seven plus percent of those providers will accept 150 to 200%. So we do have room to negotiate, and we have agreed with our carrier and our repricing partner so that we do have room to negotiate for that seven plus percent. Now, there are still some of the one to two percent of providers that just say, I am not going to work with you. In some of the outlying areas, I know in North Georgia here, there's been some providers that, have, that we've seen those things happen as well. But what we've done is we've OptiMed, we've partnered with a strategic advisor that has experience and we have results. And what we're doing is we're trying to limit and our goal is no balance billing. Our pricing partner is Zealous. They've been in the pricing negotiation with providers for over 20 years. They have over 11 years of uh, providing reference-based pricing solutions in the marketplace. Over 5 million reference-based pricing claims have been repriced. Over 45,000 patients or employees' lives are um, insured under reference-based pricing programs through Zealous alone. A typical, through, according to Zealous, is 15 to 25 percent. So again, I'm promising less than they're promising. We have, in other words, they're a full integrated partner. They will do the industry-leading advocacy. So if we have that 7%, we have that 1%, 2% that are resisting the 150% reimbursement, Zealous will be that patient advocate for your clients so that they do not have to do the negotiation. And typically, they never see it. They never know what's going on behind the scene. Proactively, again, most surgeries, I know even nowadays when I go to the physician and they've already pre-certed me, they've already, they know what my copay is, they know if my uh, lab work is covered under the copay or a second copay, they've already done the pre-cert call. Then they verify the service charges and what it applies. Zealous is involved there, they give them the price estimates on those and medical management goes into place, typically, that's all that's necessary, and the repricing is all completed electronically when we do the claims. One of the other things that I want to do, I call this the baby elephant, is uh, how do we find a doctor? Because we have done something really tremendous in one way, in that over the last 30 years, some of us, not all of us, because not all have been in the industry that long, but over the last 30 years, what have we been saying? We started this in the 90s. Go in network, get your PP. Here's your PPO list. I, I remember carrying in my briefcase two, three, four different providers. I had these big old uh, pages, you know, books of providers which were already out of date. And we've we were all been saying, go in network, go online, find your provider. Only use these providers. You have to get a referral. You can't self-refer. We're not doing that. 
What we're saying is, what if we can put that same power? What if we can and help them find a reference-based provider more simply than everybody else? And that's what I think we have with our with our provider. With through Zealous, we have a reference-based phone app that we can help you geolocate providers near you. Here's the second thing to this phone app, and this is where uh, we talk about the, the millennials, the Gen Xers, and even uh, some people in my age grouping. They, uh, we have that geolocate, go to your phone, find a provider that's near you, and we will pull up a reference-based provider first. Or second, if you don't like them or if you don't, you're not satisfied, you've used them before, whatever, and you decide you want to do another doctor, you can also find other physicians and providers on there. But of course, we're going to be providing, number one, physicians that they know they can go to that have already agreed to reference-based pricing. What better solution is it? So what we've done is we've changed the unknown. We had the old approach of traditional insurance plans. We moved to a new approach of level funded plans in the last five years. Now, let's let's move to version 2.0. No balance billing, reference-based pricing. We're going to save claims for the employee. We're going to save claims for the account, the employer claims account. We're going to help them find uh, reference-based providers by a phone app. We're fully integrating all elements and solutions. I think we're bringing to you solutions to these questions that you've asked. Why OptiMed and why UGP is that OptiMed refunds 100% of the surface claims funding at the end of the contract. We can use, we can do reference-based pricing, or if you want to do the old way and then switch them next year, or do half and half. We can do PPO networks like Cigna, First Health, Cofinity, or PHCS network. Um, we can even do tri-level uh, for your, some larger accounts if you have some of those that, that need to do tri-level. Some hospital accounts want to do those type of things. We can do that. We have 10 plus off-the-shelf plans for your under 100 groups. We have COBRA admin included some of the administrators out out there that are offering their level funded plans, you have to watch because they don't have a relationship with a zealous and they don't always include COBRA admin. They don't always include other elements. We're going to include a complete program for you. Lastly, on this checklist is we can combine our level funded reference base or PPO with GAP and calls a single admin. So if you want to offer first dollar gap coverage or even gap with a low deductible, uh, we can do a combination plan such that when that employee client has a claim, they go in, the provider submits it, we adjudicate the claim first with our level funded plan and secondly through the gap plan. Again, why choose OptiMed? 50-year-old national third-party administrator. We're in 42 states now. We're headquartered here in Atlanta, where I'm located. We also have a sales office and support staff out of Newtown, Pennsylvania. Because we are cloud-based and we have continuity, when COBRA struck, we didn't miss a day of functionality. We're still answering our uh, customer service lines 80% of the time in less than 30 seconds. 93% uh, of our uh, electronic claims are paid within three days. So again, we have not stopped anything because we have the continuity that you want. We do FSA, HSA admin, HRA. We can do GAP, MEC, limited plans. Also, as part of our phone app program, we are launching now an even better phone app for a one-touch system that you can log into. You can get my plan info where you can upload your plan information, your deductible, coinsurance, et cetera, so that whenever the employee has a question about a plan, go to their phone right in their hand, and they can see what the deductible, what their out-of-pocket is, see what they've met. They can also do a provider search right there immediately. They can go on and they can do a telephonic doctor visit, one touch. They can do it texting or they can do it on the phone. We also include in their provider lookup so that you can see reviews of providers. 
Uh, we have an RX market program in there with access to over 25 different PBMs so that you can say, hey, uh, your doctor prescribes uh, Lipitor for you. You can go, you can enter that in. It will find within a, a whatever radius, five, 10 mile radius, and see what the lowest prices are for that Lipitor. You might be able to find it outside of your plan so the employee can get a lower pricing, which again, that's a win-win. The employee gets a lower price for his prescriptions and the plan does not have that claim against him. We're working on getting Kelly's Choice Wellness Program integrated into the plan. We also have employee assistance program included. We have COBRA HIPAA, Section 125 admin. We always include online admin. We can show your client how to get online and do add, deletes, et cetera, open enrollment situations. We can also accept spreadsheet enrollments. We will be launching our OptiRater program, which is a broker online quoting through our broker portal. If you're interested in that, reach out to me and we will uh, set up a time that we can go through that. And I can introduce you or your admin staff that would do those quotes so that you can have many of them instantly. Takeaway from today, reference-based pricing is the direction for level-funded plans. I think this is where we're going, version 2.0. We want to be your partners that make it work for you. OptiMed, Zealous, PhoneApp, we are about bringing you solutions. Now, the next step is how do you get illustrated rates? You guys know all this. The census, basic information, your current plan, design or designs, if you would give us that information. If you give us your current renewals, that's always helpful so that we can show you what level funded might work. And also we might be able to show a level funded gap combination that might be even better for you. And that's all if we have your current plan designs and some renewals. Let me know what your pain points are. Price, plan design, service. A lot of times we do take over cases because of poor service from other situations. So again, starting mid-July, you'll be able to go to OptiRater and upload, or you can just send information to me. To get illustrated rate, quote, just do what's above. Then if, well, if those rates are, are good for us and we'd like to continue, we can help you set up on online PHQs, or if they're a larger group, we need a couple years claims history, and we can move on from there and get you some firm rates and begin that open enrollment process as smooth as possible. We can do all of that with some simple online tracking that's HIPAA compliant on our own servers. So I appreciate you today. Here is my information. Reach out to me for quotes. Reach out to me and we can get you set up on the OptiRater. Was there anybody that had any questions? Can you take can Easy, take app? Easy app? Yes, we yes, can we take can Easy things. app forms. We can use uh, Starmark Easy app. Uh, we can use them. There's a couple others that we can have. I have a list of those. Uh, the state of Oklahoma, some different ones that are out there, but the easiest one is the star mark, trust mark one would be simple for us. Rates, we usually get rates back to you within, we get you on the Opti Rater. That'll take a uh, level funded plan, will take three to four days right now. And then firm rates usually take about 10 to 15 days to get those. We try to do them less. We're, we're working on getting the, the Opti Rater to do, um, to do the illustrated rates for you uh, within 24 hours. And we're working, always working with the underwriters to try to cut that. But we always want to be reviewing those plans so that we can get those firm rates for you. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. I'm Glenn Donahue, Vice President of Sales with OptiMed. We look forward to the opportunity to work with you and your clients in the future. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day now.